Are you having problems with your pilot light not staying lit or your pilot light going out randomly? We're going to fix that today for free. We're going to teach you how to take it apart. We're going to diagnose why the pilot light isn't working properly. We're going to fix it and explain how it works. First, you need to turn off the gas and then remove the nuts from the burner assembly. These happen to be 3 eighths of an inch on my hot water heater. Now we need to take apart the pilot light gas tube. This is where gas goes through the tube so you can start your pilot light. Next, we take off the thermocouple. This is the culprit to almost all pilot light problems. Now disconnect the igniter switch. This is what creates a spark to light the pilot. Then we need to loosen the nut on the main burner tube. Once the nut is off, then we can start taking out the main burner tube. Pull it down and tilt it out of the way. When you pull it out, lift up on it at the same time because it's seated in a little bracket, like I show here. This hot water heater is 19 years old and you can see this pile of rust on top. This is rust that's fallen from the inside over time. Here's an overview for how everything works. When you start the pilot light, there's a little bit of gas that goes through this tube right here. It's then ignited by this igniter right here. The flame then heats up this rod right here, which is called a thermocouple. A thermocouple is a flame sensor that makes sure gas doesn't get sent if there's no flame, which would fill up your whole house with gas. It works by getting heated up by the flame and sending a small electrical signal to the gas control valve. If the thermocouple isn't working properly, no gas will be sent to the pilot light or the main burner. This is why we need to clean or replace the thermocouple. I'm using 120 grit sandpaper, but you could use emery cloth or something similar. This is how well you'll want to clean the thermocouple. While you're there, make sure rust hasn't fallen into any of the holes on this main burner. And if cleaning your thermocouple doesn't work, you can easily replace it. Most hot water heaters I come across have a thermocouple like this one, which you just slide out and replace it. They come in 18 inches, 24 inches, and 36 inches. Just make sure when you install it that the flame hits the end of the sensor. Some hot water heaters require a full assembly like this one. Just remember to figure out which one you have before you go to the hardware store or you order one online. And if you order one online and click my links, which will be below, I'll get a small kickback and it'll help support the channel with no extra cost to you. Now I'm just gonna clean this real quick before I put the burner assembly back in. When you go to put your burner assembly back in, make sure you pop a wheelie so that you can set the tube in that bracket. It can be a little fussy, but it'll eventually just set in there real nice. Once that's in place, go ahead and stick your main tube back in the control valve and go ahead and tighten up the nut. While we're working here, if you've gotten any value from this video, if you could hit the thumbs up and consider subscribing. We have a couple more videos on hot water heaters, such as how to replace the anode rod and how to flush the system. Now we're just gonna tighten up the pilot tube here. And now the thermal couple needs put back in. Just nice and snug, nothing crazy here. Now connect your ignition switch and put the little rubber tube over it. Now turn the gas back on and we'll need to test it, see if it works, and then check for leaks. So our pilot light is staying lit and I did this about five days ago and still have hot water, so we're good to go. And it fires up and shuts off just fine. Now put your nuts back on, and if you don't have this little nut driver attachment, you're really missing out. And put the other nut back on. And I'll show you here, this is exactly where the anode rod is that we will replace. And it was disgusting. Now we're gonna push down on the pilot and hit the igniter switch. And hold that until we can turn the burner on. Since we disconnected gas lines, we need to make sure there's no gas leaks. I love this little gas sniffer and it works well for me, but you could also use water and soap. Since you're down there, go ahead and clean this little filter. As air gets sucked up the chimney, it'll pull in lint and debris, and that'll also mess with your burners and pilot light if it doesn't have good airflow.